I would say like 15 years ago, I maybe wouldn't have agreed immediately to join such a meeting. Um, Lisa said, um, in this room, there are a lot of people, or all people here have the passion for quality and safety. And then came in aviation. I come from different industries. As Marcus said, this building is new. Um, it was opened 1st of February, and I like to see it as a welcome present for me, because that's when I joined. And that was, was also my entry into aviation industry. So I'm new to the industry, but I'm not new to quality. I spent five years before in um, white goods industry, household appliances, and almost 20 years in BMW. And um, quality, as you can imagine, because you're all consumers too, is truly important. But also safety. And for me, it's always sometimes funny, sometimes a little bit astonishing that people think aviation has only to have safety. Yes, it's true. If an engine burns, the plane might crash, and that's a lot of fatalities in one moment. But um, if you wake up in the morning, you're the COO, and you see a whole building burning in the UK, with a lot of people dying, and the cause is a fridge, you have a lot of calls to find out if it's yours. So, safety has accompanied me in the last job, and obviously also in the car business. There, it may be five people who have an issue if the car has a, has a safety issue at that one moment, but it's just the scale that makes safety so important. And um, I started working in uh, production in BMW, and there obviously it's all about the quality that you deliver, but it not, it's not so much about the safety system, it's not so much um, about um, thinking about policies and, and so on, it's all procedures and processes. And then every now and then a, an auditor shows up. I mean, I guess you're auditors sometimes, but... Um, if you're the one being audited, auditor um, most of the time is a, mm, a difficult person that is digging and poking into some very details um, that for sure at that moment you don't have on, on uh, top of your mind and you're somewhat um, reluctant to enjoy such meetings and you're somewhat reluctant to enjoy standards. But then BMW did a very smart thing. I was already senior manager, and BMW decided that all senior managers get the auditor training for ISO 9000 at that point in time, which meant 10 days of training in a row with a test in the end. And all of us were like, oh, Jesus, we don't have time for that. And then standards, I mean, come on. That's just pages and pages of boring things that nobody understands. At that point in time, obviously, nobody has ever read a standard. We were all relying on our staff members to implement what was requested in the standards. But that week was very interesting, because what we realized is, in those standards, everything was written down very clearly, and just in a very, very tangible and, and applicable way, what we try to do anyhow in our daily business. And that's what a good standard is about. It's not adding bureaucracy. It's adding clarity. It gives you peace of mind. It helps you to implement in a very short time a working quality system into your company. A bad standard has first in place that you need to understand it because it's incomprehensible, but anyhow, even a badly written standard helps you because it takes from you the effort to rethink your own system, to reinvent the wheel. Because let's face it, quality is really important, but it's not the value-adding process. If I could, I would have no quality people in my company because everybody is working perfectly well together and with the perfect mindset, with the perfect methods, with the perfect processes. Just 
that's not reality, and therefore um, I have a very good and very performant and very dedica dedicated quality organization. So, I learned standards are truly important. I learned safety is truly important. And what I also learned in the automotive industry, quality, in the consumer's view, is a differentiating factor. But from our business ethos, safety can never be something that should be a differentiating factor. And that's why I'm so happy to see people in the room who sometimes may be competitors in the field, but not competitors when it comes to safety. Because what we all want is people entering a plane to feel safe, to be 100% confident that they're going to arrive Maybe not in time, because that doesn't depend on the engine, but to arrive safely where they wanted to go. And um, I think the good thing in aviation industry compared to automotive or white goods, it's a very close community. So you can bring all the people who can really make a change into a room like this, and you can be sure that if you closely collaborate, if you agree on a certain standard, if you implement that standard in your companies and never get tired to push for it, it really makes a change. It really does. In other industries, that's much harder to achieve. The only risk that you might have is that um, everybody I met in aviation is so passionate about his or her knowledge, know-how, about um, quality and safety, um, but also has like 20 years of experience that I can imagine, I've, I've never joined um, one of those meetings where you define the standards, but I can imagine that it's quite difficult to agree on one standard, to agree on one wording, to agree on one way to implement it. And that might be difficult, but that's really important because that's what we want. We want one language, we want one standard, we want one way of implementation, and we want it to be fast. And that's also something that I learned that may be not nice from my side, but um, planes are very fast. Implementation and definition of standard in the aviation industry isn't. And I think meetings like this are great to change this to make things quicker, to push for things, and um, to really unite everybody in this passion for quality. So, another thing that, as regards quality, was a very important learning to me, is when I joined Rolls-Royce Motor Cars within BMW, as you can imagine, quality is quite important there. Um, I was also responsible for quality, first time in my life. And the first thing that I did is I tried to understand where quality comes from or where it is destroyed. And um, there was quite a clear distribution of issues and BMW has a very professional management of issues. So whatever comes in, whether it's from the field, whether it's uh, still in the development process or whether it's in production, flows into the same system, is treated in the same way, and is also categorized. And of all root causes that we identified in car industry, that's quite common, 75% were concept issues coming from design, from development. 20% were supplier issues, and only 5% were internal production. Now you have to know that in automotive industry, usually the internal value creation is, allowed, is, is about 10 to 15%, now even less with, uh, with electrification. Um, but that was quite a clear distribution. In home appliances, where I did the same thing, um, it was around 60% um, supplier issues. Um, it was about 30% um, development and 10% internal production. And that gives us a hint. It's too late if we try to produce quality into the product. And if it's, it's even more too late if we try to inspect quality into the product. What we have to do is 
Start in the very beginning. Do preventive quality work. Design products that are so robust that they ensure also quality in production and in the field. And um, this is something that I understood you're also aiming for with the um, AS13100. And I only invite you to focus most of your energy in whatever you do on preventive work, because that's where the quality happens. That is where the miracle happens. So I hope you're going to have a great day today. Um, as I said, we're united, not competitors. We're united in the passion for quality and safety. I cannot say that too often. And um, I just wish you a pleasant day. I wish you good results. And I wish you um, very, very pleasant encounters and a good networking part, because that's part of the fun. Thank you.